Hola, hola, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I am back. I'm using or trying to use the light against my window, so uh, yeah, the image might not be very good. But I don't think that matters because today is going to be a different video completely from the other ones. Today I'm going to show you something that I've been working on that has been very helpful for my mental health. It is my very own personal mental health journal. I have talked about my gratitude journaling. That's something that I'm still doing, but for that I have another separate uh, journal. So this one is going to be on this notebook. As you probably know, if you've seen my last video, quick update, I'm still depressed. <laughs> <laughs> this is what depression does to you a few weeks ago i was getting upset over anything and then i would just start like spiraling into these monologues of anger luckily mainly when i was alone and to myself but my partner had to witness a few of those also luckily he knows how to deal with them and uh, he doesn't uh pay much attention to what I'm saying because it's all <laughs> I'm sorry BPD right but uh, lately the manifestation of this depression has been through nonsensical crying sometimes it's almost funny because <laughs> I'm just like I just start crying over I mean nothing nothing is happening but I just start like <laughs> oh my god don't you feel you're watching a video in the 80s I'm never gonna give you up I'm never gonna say goodbye <laughs> anyway I just wanna show you what I've been doing so stick around and now let's get into the video crafting time woohoo Okay, here we are, but before I start, I wanted to say thank you to my new subscribers. That reminds me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell if you want to get notified every time that I post a new video. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. First of all, I am not using a journal. I decided to make my journal myself with this awesome notebook. This is the beginning. I hope you have your coffee or some tea. I have my very special coffee here. I love collaging. I wanted to make a very colorful first page. So I made this collage with some images that I love, but most of all, I wanted to put like a title. So I wrote my crazy, stronger, mighty words because that's going, what's going to be inside this journal. My words and thoughts and reflections and everything. I also added lots of things like that are going to be related to the journal, like this lady reading here. All of these things, I found them in some old magazines that I had for my crafting. If you're new here, I love crafting. So this is why I'm making this. So I think I'm jumping ahead. What I wanted to say first actually was why I decided to work on a mental health journal. Some of you might know that journaling is always recommended by therapists as a kind of like a therapy tool. It's very cathartic and it's very helpful to put your thoughts on the page. It helps you, you know, like let everything out. But I've been researching a bit about it. I've discovered that there are so many ways of journaling and especially for mental health. That's why I decided to make this video. And because I've been working on it for a few days, I'm already seen how 
it really helps for my mental health one day if we are able to see humans again <laughs> face to face i hope that uh, one day when i start going through to the therapist again it's really good to bring your journal with you and discuss some of the things obviously it's very personal and you don't have to show it but if you want to have it for you know to use as a reference for when you're doing therapy it's really good to to work on the things that you've written on the journal with your with your psychologist with your psychiatrist there are uh, many more benefits to uh, journaling and that's why i wanted to show you the types of journaling that you can do so these are the ones there are more actually but these are the ones that i decided to do after my research and watching lots and lots of youtube videos <laughs> i i love being creative and that's one of the uh, ways that you can help improve your mental health and, and your you know well-being in general if you are creative or if you are artistic you can let your feelings or your emotions out here in an artistic way in my case I love crafting so being able to do crafting here in the journal it's actually really good because um, it allows me to have everything in one place and then you can go back to it you know some of the things that I craft that I uh, make I have them in a, in a trunk somewhere and I have to look for them and and but with this I I plan to have it always with me and I have it on my nightstand also with uh, ramble journaling that is really really uh, useful and for that is really useful to have it on your nightstand because ramble journaling or it's also called brain dump which is i think is such a funny expression ramble journaling is just writing everything that comes to your mind and it's usually best to do it when you just woke up the idea is to just write 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 don't stop to think or analyze or think about what you're feeling or or why are you writing what you're writing just write everything that comes to your mind it doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense write until you feel that you want to stop it could be a page three pages and then you can go back to it at night or a few days later or when you go to the therapist and talk about it with them with this type of journaling that i recommend everyone to do it uh, because it's great the things that, that <laughs> come out of your mind it's amazing and but with this when you go back to what you wrote you can do this you can explore your emotions so you can go back and read what you wrote what you were feeling i don't know if it's a type of journaling this is something that for me is the most important thing is actually putting some thought some deep thought about what you wrote i only did it once but i wrote something on a particularly difficult day that i had then i went back to it the next day and I did some exploring of the emotions that I wrote down so what's the benefit of this as I mentioned before in other videos the main thing or the first thing for me to do is understand and define or pinpoint the emotion the emotion that is troubling me that day or the emotions that i'm struggling with during a month like this one it sounds more simple than it actually is it's not that simple if you ask someone to describe what they're feeling you'll see that um they don't do such a good job <laughs> people seem to get stuck at sad or happy and there are so many 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 more emotions so 
um, like I was saying at the beginning, I, you know, with depression, I've been experiencing depression in lots of different creative ways. So why is this important? For me, little disclaimer, I am not a mental health professional. I just someone, I'm just someone that has a lot of experience with mental illness and I'm very passionate about mental health. So as I was saying, identifying the emotion or emotions is key is the main thing to start dealing with it that's why i'm going to show you i'll go back to the other things um here um i don't want you to read a lot here i mean it's personal but i'm very open about my mental health but this was a very difficult weekend i was already struggling with depression and then i had this this little problem where I ran out of medication, but even before I ran out of medication, I, I knew what was going on. When I started crying, I realized that I didn't really have a reason for that crying. And because I know a lot about depression and especially my depression, I knew that the crying was because of the depression. That came from several times of understanding my emotions and knowing what it was it the same happened when i was angry after a couple of days i realized that oh so this is what we're doing now this is what you're doing to me depression i <laughs> i snap at everyone and everything okay fair enough let's try to deal with it uh, for instance with my partner i i actually told him i'm so sorry I've been a bitch for <laughs> the past two days and I think it's because of uh, my depression and he was so cool about it he was like yeah I know <laughs> that's why he wasn't even uh, paying attention to my little outbursts of anger that was thanks to you know, uh, identifying that that feeling it wasn't because I'm um, I'm a bitch or <laughs> or because I'm mean I mean it's not an excuse you should never treat anyone badly especially someone so sweet that doesn't deserve it like him but knowing knowing why this was happening that let me address it and this is what I wanted to talk about so the next day uh, after this weekend I went to the pharmacy I got my medication but then when I went back to this and I read it and I started thinking about it yeah I kick myself in the butt a bit because you know like how could you you know, forget the medication so then when I went back to this and I, I tried to analyze it um, I came up with a plan and I said you know what instead of judging myself and, and thinking oh my god again and, you know all the snowball of negative uh, self-talk I said to myself, no, nah, stop wasting time with all that shit. Let's make up a plan. So next time this happens, not specifically the medication thing, because I, ugh, I'm not going to do that again. But next time you have a depressive episode that it's so difficult to control, we'll have a plan. So this, these are things that I learned in DBT, my dialectical behavior therapy. This is the plan to deal with my depressive episode. Because I know that I have them and I know <laughs> that they come back. But this is a way of dealing with things. So first of all, there are some things that you can do to self-soothe. There are many, many more, but I decided to write down the ones that work best for me. So you have things that you can do like visual things, hearing, smell, taste and touch. Things like lighting up a candle, a scented candle. So that could be uh, for you know, looking at it and also smelling it. It's mostly things that are comforting for you. For the touch, wrap up in a blanket. It's about you know putting yourself in a situation where you feel comfortable, safe. You know, you're just trying to go through this in the best way that you can. Distraction. You can distract yourself in, in several ways. I think distraction is a very useful tool. It's not something that, that's why I said depressive episode, because I don't think distraction is, is something that you should always do. You should deal with your feelings, deal with your emotions. That's why 
I'm doing this journal too but then another way uh, that using the journal is really good is that when you go back read and um, analyze your emotion or your thoughts because I've been having a lot of intrusive thoughts sometimes when you're in in this state which is like the the very difficult uh, depressive episodes uh, it's not very easy to deal with the intrusive thoughts so in those cases distracting is a good thing so uh, activities you know cleaning my room uh, watching tv netflix uh, contributing this one is really good helping someone surprise a friend give away things you know just you can just do like a little gesture for someone you know if you're helping someone for instance someone that is also struggling and you know what they're going through first of all it makes you feel less alone and also when you're thinking about them it gives you a, a different perspective on what you're going through and also it is distracting then you have the tip exercise you can tip the temperature do intense exercise pace breathing or paired muscle relaxation i will leave it there if you want to pause and have a read but it's a bit self-explanatory in this video is so long so other things that i'm going to be doing in this journal is i'm going to be writing or gluing inspiring quotes uh, or you know things that i see and mean a lot to me when i come back to the journal and it, it's nice to have everything in a you know tangible way to come back to and, and uh, remind you and that's why I made this first two pages because you know I wanted to write good things about myself you know I wrote fabulous and buzzing it and <laughs> I also I have this uh, Simone de Beauvoir stickers and also this one forget the mistake remember the lesson especially for someone as perfectionist as myself this i found it on a magazine uh someone was talking about the lockdown and i thought it was really cool because this is what i feel too i found ways to be a friend to myself so that's another thing that i want to do in this journal write positive things about myself write positive affirmations um and that's the other thing self-love sections so this one might be a bit difficult for some people it used to be really really difficult for me this is something that I really recommend to do on your journal you write things you love about yourself I wrote a few things I don't want to spend a lot of time on this you know <laughs> but I think that's so good so you can you can Come back to the journal when you're you know going through one of those periods of of self-loathing or or just not liking yourself very much this that's something that i'm working on and i hope you're working on that with me that's why i want to share these things so i want you to go and do this try it it's gonna make you feel better you'll see okay so what else okay so these are just some phrases as you can see i love gluing stuff <laughs> these are some things that i had from one of my crafting projects you know love yourself more more kindness kindness less judgment things like that that's also very nice because you know we've been talking about neuroplasticity and this is all about trying to focus your brain on the beneficial things but i really like adding all these things to my journal because i don't know it, it sounds silly but when you're spending like half an hour doing this just looking at all these really positive phrases that's what you're doing you're retraining your brain okay this is something that i did to have as a guide my healthy habits that doesn't mean that i do eh, all of this every day that's why i wrote i am trying to improve this and that's okay 
because I'm trying not to be uh, too hard on myself, especially during this difficult period that I'm going through. So things like mindfulness, that this I do every day, meditation, dance, gym, eating healthy, which I'm trying to do a lot, taking my meds on time, <laughs> and journaling. And that is very, very, as I said, very beneficial for your well-being. The other day I thought, you know what, I think I felt better today and I'm just going to write about it. And that's, I think, the other category I haven't talked about, which is bullet journaling. It's very in nowadays. Everyone's doing bullet journaling. So in this case, I just, I love lists and I just did this to, to do this, to celebrate the small wins. It's difficult to do the very simple tasks of life when you're depressed. So that's why I wanted to write these things down, to appreciate, appreciate that I felt a little bit better to be able to do all these things. And again, sorry if I'm repetitive, but it's fun. And all this time that I'm doing this, I'm thinking about, look at all the things that I did. So that is still, retraining your brain and appreciating yourself i hope you've enjoyed this video remember to give it a thumbs up if you did also don't forget to subscribe and let me know if you're going to try to do some mental health crafting or journaling remember you are strong you are amazing you're fabulous and you're not alone and I love you. See you next time. Bye.